Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the garage. Hope everybody's having a good day. I know here in Pennsylvania today, it was just muggy and miserable out. Uh, you couldn't go outside without sweating, that's for dang sure. But anyhow, it stormed a couple hours ago and it feels like the temperature dropped 20 degrees and the humidity is gone. So feeling a lot better out today, or today, now. Yesterday I was investigating Caitlin. As you guys know, if you've been following along, we had some issues when we went out to UCC. She was saying that the trailer was lost, but we didn't have a trailer and it's been intermittent and pretty much halfway to work every day and halfway home, it comes up saying the trailer's missing, you know, check the brake system for the trailer, all this. It really didn't make much sense. Also the remote start wouldn't work because of that. Found a video on YouTube uh, guy replaces brake switch and that solved it for him. So I was going to take the one out of the race truck and put it in Caitlin But I got messing with the brake switch and it seemed like it was hung up or something and now everything's fine So we might still need a new brake switch or we just need to keep it lubricated or something But for right now, it's fine remote start works and it didn't give me any problems on the way to or the way from work today So hopefully that's solved like I said, we may need to change that brake switch out, but we'll see what happens from here on out. So what are we getting into tonight on the race truck? Well, we're not doing any cutting, welding, or grinding. None of that is going to happen to the race truck tonight. Tonight, we're dealing with this box right here. That's all our fuel fittings for our fuel cell and our air dog to be mounted in the rear here. It's our feeds, our returns, all that. Uh, we're going with a push lock hose from Fragola. Uh, reason with that is because like I discussed in the last video, it's NHRA approved. So if we ever go to an event or something, that push lock hose is good to go. So I'm gonna lay some of this stuff out and we'll talk about what's going on. Also, we got our NHRA rule book just so we have it. I have a bunch of vibrant performance fittings over here from the other day. These are just our hose ends for our AN line. So they're good to go. Here's all our push lock stuff and a couple fittings that you probably are wondering what the hell they are. So all our push lock stuff's here. This is our, our fuel tank return, uh, a straight 10 AN, which I'll explain why 10 AN. Here's our fuel feed, our return from our air dog. So what we're gonna be doing is we will be returning from both CP3 pumps to one 10 AN line, which is where this Y comes in here. So we will Y from our two, two pumps with six AN fittings to a 10 AN line. If you have stroker pumps, not necessarily with these stock pumps, but with stroker pumps, it can be a restriction having a smaller return. That's why we got rid of our factory return, which we were utilizing. So this is just preparing for the future, basically. So whenever we up our fuel system or you know do the motor build, we don't have to redo our return line. It's already done. Our fleece uh, fuel distribution block is only gonna be used for our fuel feed because we don't use enough fuel to need two air dogs, so we don't need to change that out. But return-wise, we're gonna be returning from these two CP3s through that Y fitting, and then we're also going to be bringing the return fitting in the back of the head into that line. There's another return right here, this banjo bolt. That is the return for your fuel rail pressure relief valve. Well, we have a fuel rail plug, so we don't need that line. I'll just cap this off. I'll probably actually leave this banjo bolt fitting in there for now to make sure we're not getting any leakage. Uh, just double verify what I'm thinking is correct, but that will get capped off in the future. We won't need that for the time being. And if we ever need to, you know, if we ever put a relief valve in there, we can always adjust our fuel system accordingly. So we'll have two 6AN lines coming from our CP3 pumps. They will Y in here to this 10AN fitting, then go to this T, and then we have a 10AN to 6AN adapter here, which will be from the back of the head into the top of the T, and then from this back to the fuel cell. Yeah, clear as mud, right? So I'm going to start by putting the everything on our CP3 pumps and we will work our way back and then work our way forward with our fuel feed. First things first, need to get the fuel cell mounted, need to get the air dog mounted.
had it ran i only ended up forgetting two things and actually the one i didn't forget uh well actually neither i forgot i thought i had more dash six an line the stainless braided stuff here than i did uh so i need another two foot of that for in the engine compartment which you'll see in a second and i had a straight fitting for the dash eight push lock to go to the to the fleece fuel distribution block I think it'll be better with a 45 so we're going to need to get those two things so here's what we got so here's our uh our fuel tank nothing's like symmetrical or nothing but nothing's rubbing anything i'm fine with that we do need to work on our line routing a little bit like here but to start we have our feed from our fuel cell which 90s out uh this is a dash 10 to dash uh, eight push lock and that goes into our air dog quick disconnect fitting in the back here and then we have our return from our air dog right in our tank very small piece of hose there not much uh routing needed done there that was that was pretty simple anyhow uh here's our feed line like i said i have these little connectors here which i put our return on this is actually more for this corrugated stuff uh the larger hose that i have of it but they're working pretty well for that but the uh the feed line to the distribution block i just zip tied to that for now we'll come up with something better to mount it but as you can see just down the frame and down the side here like i said we'll find a better way to do that feed line right here like i said i have a straight fitting it'll definitely be a lot better with a 45 so i'll get a 45 for that so that goes in our distribution block and feeds our cp3 pumps just like it always has um we 90'd out of the top cp3 pump and i moved the 120 degree fitting i had in the top one to the bottom for the return those two cp3 pump returns come down to our y block here as you can see, I got a straight fitting and a 90 here, dash six to this dash 10, and then to this, this T. And like I said, I don't have the dash six line to go from here to the back of the head, which is a 90 in the back of the head and an adapter. So that goes in here to our dash eight adapter, dash six to dash eight adapter, and down to our dash 10 uh, return line. Which once again comes up the frame here and scoops off here and returns to the tank i would have liked to have gotten one of the one big 120 fittings but i couldn't find one that would give me the dimensions where it was big so i just went with this 120 uh works pretty good i might have to make a little bracket off of this mount just to keep it away from the shock but like i said everything's not bad this needs to be corrected somehow here but we'll figure that out um probably cut the zip tie and maybe we'll make a mount over top of our shock but all in all i'm happy with it it's pretty clean it's simple you know we don't have three returns coming back or whatever uh so yeah i'm liking that we still do need to cap off our fuel rail that uh banjo bolt fitting like i said i i'm probably going to adapt to it and put a line out of it just to see make sure no fuel comes out but i'm fairly certain i'm i'm very certain that that's just for the fuel pressure relief valve or the fuel rail relief valve which we don't have we have a plug uh something i had forgotten to add in there those push lock fittings are nice they make things easy it's less steps than doing your normal an setup and that parker hose like i said you order it with a Fregola name, but it is Parker Hose Push Lock, 300 PSI rated, made in the USA. So it's good stuff. It's very thick, heavy duty. I mean, it's what they recommend, honestly, obviously. But the Push Lock fittings, you should definitely try and get it over to the vice. Like I'm gonna have to pull that whole feed line out to do it, or you definitely need something sturdy that you can push into and lube up the fitting and i i was actually giving it a little heat with the heat gun um you could also use like boiling water just to soften it up and once you start pressing on a fitting go for it because it seems like if it stops it stops you know if you stop for a second that thing does not want to go any further so while you got the momentum just keep pushing so that's how you do push locks the fuel system is for the most part in just a little dumb shit on a couple fittings left to do and that thing's solid we're not going to 
start the truck or put fuel in the tank anytime soon because I do need to figure out a like vent slash rollover valve for it and how that all works. So that's going to require us to drill into the tank or, you know, put some sort of adapter in. I'll probably just drill with like a bulkhead fitting and do it that way. So I hope you guys enjoyed. That's just another thing off our list. Uh, fuel system is a pretty important thing. So we got that. I know the dash 10 line for the return is probably a bit overkill, but we won't. I'm hoping that we won't have to worry about that being a restriction. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I'll check you out on the next one. Get out in your garage. Get the wrench on your truck.